Hi, it's Kevin Sharp, and today I am joined by Jim Mafood, the creator of Girl Scouts Deluxe. And we are not going to talk about a page. We're not going to talk about a DPS. We're going to triple down with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Jim, welcome to the Comic Art Live channel, and please tell us what you chose today. Kevin, thanks for having me. Uh, I chose... So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue 10 from 1987, the original Mirage Studios Eastman and Laird run, black and white, $1.50 cover price. Um, this was my first exposure to the turtles. And this was before the cartoon and the toys and the phenomenon. No one knew who the Ninja Turtles were. I was taking a weekend art class uh, when I was a kid. I was 12 years old. The art teacher's son was like 16, 17, and he collected comics. And he was like, hey, do you know about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? And just hearing that name, I was like, wait, what are you saying? I'm like, I have to write this down. So I write this down. I go to my local comic shop, and I'm you know, a nervous 12-year-old kid, and I'm like, hey, do you guys have ninja mutants and he's like teenage mutant ninja turtles he's like issue 10 the new issue just came out there's one copy left go over to that shelf and grab it so i grab it i'm like i, I pay for it he's like kid your mind is gonna be blown by this i get in the car my mom picks me up and i'm flipping through it and i'm immediately like my adrenaline starts pumping my hands start to get a little sweaty because i'm like this is something completely different. I have never seen anything like this. I had been collecting comics since I was a kid, eight, nine years old. I'd seen indie comics, black and white comics. This was something completely different. So the issue, you know, the shredder shows back up. I have no idea what's going on in the story or the characters. I have no idea what's happening. But anyway, the shredder shows up. He and the Foot Clan are invading April O'Neill's uh, apartment, her loft with her uh, vintage store in the, in, the, in the basement. And you get to page 19 and suddenly you turn the page and page 20, it's just numbered 20. And it counts as three pages. It's a gatefold triple page spread in the middle of the book with on the left-hand side, Shredder and the Foot Clan facing off, and your eye scrolls across this beautifully drawn spread, and you see the Turtles and Splinter at the far right-hand side coming into the thrift store. But the reason I chose this, not only because it was the first time I saw the Turtles and it was a black and white explosion in real life and also in my mind. Had you ever seen, oh, I'm sorry. Had you ever seen a triple page spread before this in your comics? No. And that, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Cause that was like the other, there's two re reasons I picked this one. I didn't know you could do something like this format wise, like print wise. I had never seen comics do anything like this. And two, this is the first time it really, dawned on me what storytelling in comics is because you immediately just move physically from the left to the right and and you get this sense of drama danger most good storytelling most good action works from left to right especially in american comics obviously like manga is the reverse of that but this was the first time that it dawned on me like oh this is how you position things like this is how you let the reader and the viewer know what you want them to look at when you want them to look at it and man even the action of like being on page 19 turning it and then unfolding this massive gorgeously drawn spread by Eastman and Laird it was like uh unfolding a map or something and being revealed the answers so, and then, you know, you turn the page and it doesn't go back immediately to the comic. There's just a bonus shredder pinup, basically. It's part of the story. It's part of the story. But that's page 21. And then 22, we're back in the action. And we're also introduced to Casey Jones, which is awesome. But this whole issue was such a great jumping on point. And 
after I read this, I begged my mom to take me back to the comic shop. She took me back a week later and I was able to score volume one of the turtles color reprints. So just reading that first issue, I was exposed to the origin of the turtles who shredder was. So without even reading issues, eight and nine and the Leonardo one shot, I was able to understand this issue so much more, but I don't know, man, this issue, it was just, it was, it was like a lightning bolt through my brain type moment. Look, so. Looking at it today as a professional removed from the time when you first saw it, what jumps out at you with your pro eyes? Well, Eastman and Laird, I think are completely underrated in their, draftsmanship, actual drawing and inking ability, and storytelling. I think that they have the triple crown for what you need to make successful stories, especially since they're writing their own stuff, too. Um, and just from a craftsman aesthetic, I mean, they're working on the, the duo shade paper. They've got this really brilliant balance of whites and blacks and gray tone, Obviously, with the Black and White Turtles comics, there's this instant, like, grittiness to them. And with this um, triple-page spread, too, I'm also very impressed with their understanding of uh, proportion, perspective. Everything is in its right place. And I know these guys are h hardcore Jack Kirby fans. So you can see in their work the Kirby tricks of, like, okay, in the left-hand page of... Uh, page 20, have people in the foreground of that left-hand corner that are, you know, big shapes. And, th and that also helps you guide your eye from that to the shredder, to across the, uh, you know, merchandise that's for sale, to boom, we hit the right side and there are heroes, the turtles coming into the room. I had my sights on setting, doing art, doing comics as a career, hopefully. And Realizing and discovering that just these two guys on the East Coast were making these comics, these Ninja Turtle comics, like out of their home studio, it was so enticing and exciting for me, man. So this was just, as soon as you asked me, I mean, this kind of was one of the first things that came to my mind. Great. Thank you so much for talking with us and walking us through it and joining us my on pleasure. Comic Art Live. My pleasure, Kevin. Thanks for having me.